I need you guys to listen to what he's about to say here. This right here is the reason why I created this channel right here. This is how leaders are born. All right. So last but not least, we're going to talk about Richard Cabral. I hope I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I want to call him Coco. OK, that's what I know him from. That's where I first seen him was from Mayans. Coco Le Pollo. OK, it's like I just made that up. But. He's been on my radar, not just acting skills, but. When it comes to speaking real life and he's not really purposely doing it in a political way, but it's easy to receive it if you're in that political arena already, like myself, you can hear his speech or, or hear his interviews and be touched by it in a way to where I wish other politicians could hear this which uh what's her name um um who won in los angeles i forget her forget her name she did win and honestly i think most of that goes to coco to to mr richard because that clip went viral and everybody knew and everybody understands and everybody especially the 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 latino and latinx community they understand it because that's their people. And, and he ain't holding no punches back. So in, in this interview with uh, the real ones with John Bertha, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm, I know him as Punisher. So we got Coco and Punisher in the same room chopping it up. And we're not going to listen to the whole thing because it's an hour and 18 minutes. So if you want to, please go ahead and check out that entire interview. But just... Let's go ahead and play. I, I'm not going to even, I'm not going to even spoil anything. It's amazing. Born, raised, and these right. So that's it. You know, just pure. That that's how I was born, raised, and and I was born in in East Los Angeles, which people don't know. That's pretty much like little Mexico right there, brother. <coughs> like we've been fucking there since the fucking this shit has been fucking colonized. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like whenever that fucking act happened, like boom, this is the East Side. That's where we're at, right? And so I know nothing different than that you know what i'm saying I, I i used to go to the stores hearing spanish and you know so it's just this this this, this america that is unlike any other fucking america straight up right yeah, yeah. and um seeing the mural seeing the virgin seeing all these mm. fucking colors that this is my america yeah i don't and but also with these communities it's it's a broken community right mm. what, 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 how what, so what i believe the society it's all it's not just america right it's these 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 communities, these cultures that are not of the colonizer, whoever colonized the fucking land, right? But if you are not of that, they put you in a place Ooh. and you, shit just happens. And Ooh. So for me, it's East LA, right? For me. Hey, 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 hey. Did you just hear that? Did you, I hope you heard it. I hope you grabbed it. And I need you to let that marinate just a little bit, okay? Take a couple licks, take a couple bites. I need you to understand what he just said. He just spit some knowledge out there. He said, whoever colonized, if you're not a part of that, that, that group, they just put you over here and whatever happens, happened. And that's exactly what creates the hood. That's exactly what creates the ghetto, the projects. Why do you think we don't have funding for our schools? Why do you think we don't have the high paying jobs? Why do you think our infrastructures and our roads is is garbage? Because they just threw us right over there <laughs> and said, good luck. Go ahead and look it up, man. This I, I don't know if he, he just said that out of experience or if he read that somewhere. But that is factual. You can't argue that. That's factual. You can have some sort of opinion about it, but that's factual. 
it's ghetto it's the poverty it's and that's what it is bro. but could you feel that i mean as a youngster you could don't you feel, feel that right, shit bro right. you don't feel that shit because mm -hmm. again you think that's the norm right, right? Yep. this is what it is right, right. but right. then when you fully under start understanding the fucking sickness of communities right mm. when you start understanding that like what the fuck why all the men in my family been a prison why has my community continued to suffer why are all my uncles on drugs? Why are all the neighbors? Why are all my friends? Why, when you start fucking thinking like that, right? Mm -hmm. when, and, and for me, that didn't happen until prison. That didn't. So, 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 so. Let me let me go ahead and stop here. And like I say, if you want to listen to the whole thing after this video, go ahead and check out the whole thing. But I just need to intervene, interject right here. What he's saying is is crucial here because a lot of people will say. Well, why can't people just make better decisions? Why are they acting like this? Why are they gang banging and selling drugs and destroying their own community? On the outside looking in, you're right. Why would why would people purposely want to join a gang? Why would people purposely want to rob and steal from their neighbors? That's not like a thing that people would just wake up and just want to do. You know what I'm saying? At least for the most part. <laughs> I haven't known anyone that just woke up and just said, you know what? I, I just want to rob somebody. You know what I'm saying? But like he said, you, you're you born into it. You're born into that kind of environment. And it's just normal to you. It's normal to see drug dealers. It's normal to, to gang bang. It's normal just to get into that kind of lifestyle. You don't think nothing is wrong. If it's normal to you, you know what I'm saying? Uh, um, a good example is if you always got your steaks from Walmart, you can make a pretty good steak. You can make a pretty good steak. You season that sucker right, cook it just right. You can make a pretty good steak. And that person will say, this is the best steak ever. Walmart steaks are the best. Until they go to one of those five-star restaurants that's only in France or something. I don't know. Something like that. And get one of those $50, $60, $80 steaks with a supreme five-star chef cooking it. You haven't had nothing yet until you had that steak. But the person who had this Walmart steak for all their life, that's all they know is Walmart steak. So you can't tell them that there's better steak. They're going to look at you like, this is good. What are you talking about? Game banging? What you talking about? Does doesn't everybody game bang? Selling drugs? How do you survive? Well, you actually have a job that pays all your bills. The only job that's available for for me is is you know working at the laundromat. Yeah, it's it's like come on, bars, bars. I was fucking set in a fucking cage where my mind was able to start thinking, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, bro, that's that that's the reality. A broken childhood, broken community, and and. My family has been involved in gangs since the 1970s. What specifically? What 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 gang have what were you my, guys? My, so my fam my family's from one of the the oldest gangs probably in the United States. Um, it's the projects of DNA um called the Estrada Courts. It's actually where Will I Am came out of, right? Wow. Too, right? He was one of the you know he was one of the uh, few African Americans on that side back then, you know, and, and um. So it, it, it's the projects, and so what, what the projects were originally was um, in the 1940s when all those World War II vets were coming out, they put these housing projects in the big cities, right? So um, one of them was the Estrada Courts, right? So how, big is, how big is Estrada Courts, would you say? Like how many people are living there, roughly? Thousands, Thousands. Bro. Thousands, right? And so, so, so it's almost like a mini, it's like a mini city, city. with it, right, right, right. Yeah, right. bro, it's not, like, and the thing about the projects, like, the East Coast projects and the West Coast projects, like the East Coast are high. Right. Ours are more spread out. Yep. From the west of the Mississippi, yep. that type of shit, we're more spread out. It's like right? a village. Exactly, exactly. It's that type mm. of shit. It's that New Orleans type of shit, of right? It's that Louisiana type of shit, yes, right? Sir. So, um, so yeah, bro, it, 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 that's, where, that's where my family came from. Um, and then I wouldn't be directly involved in that game, but I, I am, uh, you know, we, we, we would just, you know, it, the what continuation. What do you mean? It's like this, bro. What happened? So gangs in East LA have been around, I mean, 1940s, bro, right? We've had a lot of people that have been, been involved in that. Where do you think they came from? What, what do you think their, their original purpose was? What was Bro, it's tribal, right? Mm -hmm. It's fucking tribal, right? As a society, you must belong to your people, right? Who are your fucking people, right? And if you don't belong to a people, you're going to get hurt. Sure. 
Yep. Something's going to happen to you, right? If you don't get what you're cruel, bro, that's just what it is, right? And, and what do you think back in the 40s? Did you hear any stories about how that originated? What were the risks? Who was coming to hurt you? So, so I <laughs> only <laughs> came from direct source, right? And so this is, so in what? East LA, in Boyle Heights, you have these beautiful murals, right? And I, and, and a fucking, uh, of, of people, mm. pain, of, of, you know what I'm saying? Of, of our culture and shit, right? But in my mind, when I grew up, none of that shit existed, right? So I asked my uncle, right? Hey, Theo, hey, how? Because uh, some of those murals say like 1979, 1983, 19, whatever, bro. And, and I was like, hey, Theo, how was it back then? And he stopped and he was like, it was cool. It was cool back then. It was different back then. And then I was like, well, what the fuck happened? And we broke it down, bro. Mm, listen. It shifted when crack hit. Ooh. Like a lot of cities. Yeah. But like Los Angeles specifically, right? East Los Angeles specifically. That's what, you know, my uncle said that before that shit hit. Yeah, you had food fucking, um, you know, doing a little heroin, you know what I'm saying? Downer shit, you know, a little acid, a little fucking drink, you know, a little. But, but when crack hit, bro, <sighs> like, mm. it just took the soul. Soul, bro. Like, cause that all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. Like I said, I don't, I don't want you guys to to get everything off of off of this video here. Like I said, after this video, go ahead and watch the full clip. But it's one more thing I I, I want you guys to hear, um, cause it it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Let's see. Listen. Close to maybe 250 to this day as we speak. <clears throat> continuously burying. You listen, know, listen, listen. Engaged. Oh my God. If if I okay, I need you guys to listen to what he's about to say here. This right here is the reason why I created this channel right here. This is how leaders are born. This is how you touch people in a way that passes the mind in straight into the heart of people right here please get your notebooks get pencil pen whatever you gotta do Hier hieroglyphics i don't care what you gotta do pay attention write this down and let this sink in please listen age right and when he came into my life and showed me love Mm. Showed me fuck love because love gets fucking thrown around too much, right? When he just like did what you're doing right now, bro. Just looking at me in the eyes and fucking listening to me, bro. Mm. Listening. No one listen, bro. Bro, everybody's crying for help. Yeah. All these kids are crying for help, but nobody's fucking listening. And when he did <sighs> that, it was fucking, and it fucked me up. It took so long to truly understand that a person could just genuinely just want to hear me, mm. care about me. Mm -hmm. If that would have happened before, in a real way, not coming in, because a lot of people get the shit fucked up. You can't come in one day and think that the child's gonna be okay. Give them some good words. Mm. You gotta, if you wanna be committed to this fucking, you gotta be to, committed. To help, you have to be committed, bro. You know, what I mean? give yourself seasons. No one's saying don't burn out, because I seen that shit too in mm. this work. Bro. I do this work. I, I'm in the hood because I come from the hood. But it's, it's you have to be willing to fucking mm. go. You know, and yes, but no, bro. If if, if someone would have been there. I think I would have because when it came, I did listen. Exactly. Can, can, can you tell me? Oh my God. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think you guys are listening. I don't think you guys are listening. Man, I hope you heard that. Oh, I just, I just hope you let that sink in just for a second. We know, we know the power of words, what, what I'm using right now, the power of words is strong. Okay. Even in the Bible, that's, that's, the, that's the verse on my neck. You know, words are power. Okay. What you speak to somebody is powerful. It could be to build somebody up or to break somebody down. You can, you can, you can literally I mean, God raised Jesus, you know, or, or Lazarus from the grave with his words. You know what I'm saying? Words are very powerful, but I think it doesn't mean anything if you don't know how to listen. 
if you don't know how to listen, like genuinely care. And I'm not talking about like a debate listen or, you know, when you're arguing with someone listening. I'm talking about you you call yourself a leader, you call yourself an activist, you call yourself a fighter of the people, the people's champ. That's what you call yourself. You need to learn how to listen to the least of these. It's easy to listen to to uh, celebrities, rich people, wealthy people, your friends, people who agree with you, uh, handsome people, beautiful people, uh, people that can benefit you in the future. But if you can't listen to people who are least of these, who have less than you, who are ugly, who don't offer anything, who are just cart pushers, who are just cashiers uh, at a barista, you know, at a, a coffee shop, a janitor, poor folks, homeless people, people with disabilities, people who believe in different things than you, who act differently than you, quote unquote, weird people. If you don't know how to listen to these people and truly care for these people, you are not a leader. You can't be a leader. I wouldn't want you to be a leader. Do not waste your time to be a leader because you ain't going to make it.